Hello there! In the previous video, we talked about the GDQuest guidelines code structure, so the way we design the code elements to appear in a given order. Now, in this video, we will talk about some good practice, things that will make the reading of the content of the script itself even better to read, and also some good practice that will prevent or at least reduce some common flaws that we find in game development and in development in general. So again, I am with the A Star Movement project open here. I will go to the scripts workflow and to this game script. The first thing that I like to talk about is the usage of new values. In our guidelines, we really favor the creative workarounds for the usage of new. So you should really put some effort to avoid new values. This is because, uh, let me go down here on this party command function. The concept behind this avoidance is that it's very hard to track when a value is new and what causes it to be new. Since new can behave like any other value, let's say that you have a variable and suddenly you couldn't get a returning value of a method. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the value of this leader variable is being set by this method. So if this method can find a member with this index, I guess, uh, it will return no. But since this variable is inside this function, it will be okay to have this no because we will have a really easy way to get why this is no. But when a variable starts to get outside the scope of a class and some other classes are using a variable, it becomes very hard to track why it turns out to be no. So this is why you should try to avoid it to really put the effort to not use no checking and try to avoid this no values. To be fair, I must say that this is not always possible, especially on GDScript, because it is a language built around the concept of no, so many of the building functions will use and return no in some extent. But really, when you are designing a class, try to avoid these no checkings. Next. As you can see, we really favor static typing in GDQuest code. If you don't know how to achieve or if you don't know how to use static typing in GDScript, you can check out the video overview of static typing in GDScript that we have in GDQuest channel to get a glance and introduction to static typing in GDScript. And the reason why we use static typing is to avoid and prevent some common flaws due to dynamic typing. So because dynamic typing allows you to change the type of the variable dynamically, for someone that doesn't fully understand the, the purpose of the code, it can be misleading or it can create errors due to these dynamic changes in the, in the value of a variable. We favor GDScript static typing to properly communicate some data and also to get some code completion easier. Next, let's talk about self-documenting code. Whenever possible, whenever you can, take the effort to make your code speak by itself. So what we are trying to say with that? Uh, let's go down here to the adjust tab position. I will open this function. The first thing is that single letter variables are not desirable. It's okay to have them inside functions but uh, let's try to understand why they are not very useful and you should avoid variable names that doesn't mean anything. Uh, if we try to read this in variable here, we don't have any data, we don't have any information about what this is, we just have a letter and letters doesn't care meaning by themselves, so we have to combine them to build words and words have meaning. We would have to dive into the implementation details to see that Okay, this is the subtraction of two vectors and then we'll, this will return another vector that will be normalized. So probably this is the movement normal. So we have the leader and then we have the tap position where the, the user probably tapped in the screen. So the direction or the normal of this movement. So why instead of having to make all this deduction, we place this data as the name of the variable. So movement normal or even movement direction, something like this. Uh, but then I will overwrite this here. 
and then we already know through the name of the variable that this is the movement normal. So if we have a bug related to the movement direction of the character, probably we will know that this variable will take a place into the solution or will take a place in the flow of the bug itself. I will undo that, leave it just n. And another thing is that let's say a class had a variable name that is built up of a single letter. Let's say we want to know where this variable is being used. I will make a search, control F. And as you can see, we have many occurrences that has nothing to do with the implementation or with the usage of this variable itself. We have a lot of noise. So I will match the case and then the whole word. And then we'll see that this is where this variable is being used. So single letter variables are also harder to find, to figure out where they are, they are to figure out if there is something that is using them and is not supposed to use. So avoid single letter variables as well. Use plain English whole words. So use English words or build up some phrase or something like this, like I did here, making the movement normal, the name of the variable, etc. Another good thing to have is to avoid repeating yourself. So avoid your code repeating itself, especially when it comes to the method name and the arguments name as well. So you can see that we have a just tap position and then we have the tap position with the second argument. So really it will be a way more structured code to have like something get adjusted. And then we have this tap position as the first argument here and then the leader position as the second argument, because the tap position is what we are going to adjust, right? So uh, get adjusted, tap position, if I fold this, this method, we know that we will get adjusted a tap position by a leader position or something like this. This will be used somehow in the code. Now, another thing, uh, let me undo that to take rid of this error there. As you can see, Resvan add a lot of documentation and this is very good because reading this documentation will give context about the method implementation and the variable and whatever is not inside the code itself. But as you can see, he doesn't add comments inside the, the functions when it's not needed to. You can see that we can read everything here and we can understand what this is doing. So it's very common when you are starting making code that you will add comments everywhere. So to explain everything that you are making in your code. And this is not a good practice because if you have to repeat yourself both in a code language and in a human language, uh, maybe your code is not speaking by itself. Or if it is, then you don't have to add the comment, right? So really you should take the effort to make your code speak by itself and avoid the comments. This doesn't mean though that you shouldn't document your code at all. You can see that Resin add documentation. This will give a lot of context, especially if this adds information that is not on the code itself, but if it adds context about the designed usage, maybe you are doing some crazy calculations or you're making a workaround for a bug, uh, something that without context wouldn't make sense. So you have to give the context of what is happening. So really you should add documentation, but you should avoid commenting what is happening inside your code. Let it speak by itself. With this good practice and with the code structure in mind, you can start designing your systems knowing that at least the code structure and your practice are aligned with GDQuest code guidelines. So that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and until the next time.